Hey, everybody, we're back again, and it is Sunday this time, and we are going to do another C++ lesson with my son, Alex. How's it going, Alex? Hey, everybody. Yeah, great to see you again. And uh, yeah, today we're going to do another really important lesson in C++, pretty easy one, mm, sort of easy one, uh, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, shouldn't be too bad. So... This time we don't actually even have slides. So we're, uh, it's gonna be just straight into the code. We don't need sliders. That's right, we don't. So, um, so here we go. And today we're going to talk about uh, CPP files and header files. So uh, yeah, we're just, gonna, we're just gonna go for it here. So at the moment we have a blank C++ project, there's nothing in here. And we see that we have in our source file, in our source folder, we have this main.cpp file, okay? So this is, this is our main, every C++ program needs to have an int main function, okay? So that's the way that any C++ program or any C++ framework actually is able to compile. The compiler actually looks for this int main function, and that's how it actually compiles your code. Okay. Now, what we do when we're actually creating um, new classes and um, new things in our C++ file, in the past, we've just done that here in our C++ file. So we have, in the past, had this class called animal and maybe we have a couple methods uh, like we have void uh, eat and void move and things like that right so mm -hmm. that's fine but eventually c++ programs start getting larger, right? Much, much bigger, as you've seen, because you've, you've already kind of jumped ahead and started working a little bit and checking out juice. So you mm -hmm. see how big these, these, um, these things become and how, how many source files there are. So what, so what we do is we're able to actually put these in separate, uh, what are called header and CPP files. And this is a way that both we and the compiler can actually classify and organize our source files when we have multiple classes. So I'm gonna show you a simple example today of what a typical header and CPP file would look like. Uh, are you ready? Yes, sir. Okay, so uh, this is how you do it in Xcode. So it's slightly different in Visual Studio or if you're using another IDE, but essentially what we need to do is we actually need to create some source files. So I'm going to go here to file and then to new, and then I'm gonna create a file. And then you start going through this. So there's, there's, a, there's a nest of, of menus here that you have to go through. So we have, uh, this is a C++ file, and then I'm going to call this one animal with a capital A. So the convention is to name it with uh, the first letters with a capital. Mm -hmm. And then you can have uh, also create a header file checked in, and I'm going to check that in. And then it just asks you for a location to actually put this in. So I will just put this in the hello folder and I will just hit create. And now we see that we have this animal, uh, animal.hpp. So .hpp and .h files are basically the same, okay? So, um, so now we have that and we have this uh, include stdio, which is essentially like IO stream. It's just a default library. You also have this, uh, this, these things at the very front that like if indef and define. Um, so what this means is this prevents if you had a couple uh, 
when when you're actually doing when your compiler is actually compiling your code it's looking for these different header files to actually compile and basically what this bit of code does is it prevents you from looking at animal.hpp twice okay so uh because what will happen is if you had two if if you had um two animal.hpps it wouldn't know which one that you were talking about okay so this mm -hmm. is just a little this is just a little um macro they call them macros in order to make sure that uh that you don't try to look at animal.hpp twice uh so now that's the hpp and then you have the cpp and we see that we have this include animal.hpp right so in short what the way this works is that the header file is used to declare your class and to declare any functions and member variables that you have in the class okay so that is what we're going to do now so we have this class it's called animal and it has two methods called void eat and void move so i'm going to take this i'm going to cut it from here and i'm going to paste it in here okay now I'm going to take these curly braces out and I'm just going to put a semicolon in here. And I'm going to make sure that this is public because I want to be able to call it from int main. Otherwise, int main won't be able to call it. Mm -hmm. And I can do the same thing that I do normally when I uh, declare a um, when I declare a, pri a, a class, which is that I, I could have private variables as well. So if I wanted to have like a std string, so I don't know if strings actually included in stdio, but let's put it in. Let's put it in here. So if I do std string, okay, now we're okay, and let's just call it. Let's just say name, and uh, I will call it horsey. This. Okay, so you can so you can have um, so you can have private variables as well. But notice that I haven't done any sort of implementation here, right? So I haven't actually said what eat or what move is, right? Mm -hmm. So you're only declaring the functions and the variable and the variables here. Now you have the CPP file, and the CPP file is where you do the actual implement what they call the implementation of the function okay so the way that you do this is we will start with void eat okay so first thing that we do is we say void okay because that's the that's what the function returns now one thing that i used to that i used to do a lot when i was first starting with c++ uh, is I would forget to put the class name. So you have to do what's called uh, putting, uh, it's called a class qualifier. Uh, so what I have to do is I have to put the class name, which is animal, and then colon, colon, and then eat. Hmm. Like this. Okay. And then now I just put my curly braces and in here i can maybe put just stood c out or c is eating okay right mm -hmm. so now it's very important to understand why we are doing why we need to why we need to put animal colon colon eat rather than just eat okay and the reason is let's say that i created another class all right, so let's do, uh, so I'm gonna do another file and this will be a C++ file and I will call this human, All right? And then I'm just gonna put this in here. So now I have two classes or I have two, sor two other source files called human. Once again, we'll do the same thing, right? So I will just include IO stream again 
And this is good exercise when you're first starting C++. Just practice creating a whole bunch of simple classes, creating some variables uh, and things like this just to get you into the syntax. So once again, class human with a capital H. And now I'm going to do this, uh, put a colon at the end, and then I will do public. And then now let's say that this human has a void eat function, right? Now, if I go to human.cpp and I said void eat, even though, even though animal doesn't have access to human, uh, like we haven't, we haven't put those two together so one could see the other, we can see that there are two, in, in our project, there are two void eats, right? There's mm -hmm. animal eat and human eat. So if I don't tell it which eat that I'm referring to, then it won't know and I'll get an error. So I will probably get an error here. So, oh, it does succeeded. Uh, so um, probably because I haven't put human or animal into main CPP, but mm -hmm. just, just to, uh, just to finish off my point, you have to put human because what this is saying is I'm referring to the human function called eat, right? Not the animal function called eat. Right. And it's so it is very common when you're building larger C++ projects to have uh, functions that are called the same thing, process, uh, you know, play, stop, uh, things like that. So so this so putting the class name, the fully they call it the fully qualified class name is what it's called. Uh, so putting the class name before eat lets it know, hey, I'm talking about eat but I'm talking about the one that's in the animal, uh, animal uh, header file, okay? Okay. Yeah. And so now I will uh, do the same thing for void move. So we will create a void move. And once again, we need to put the class name, animal move. And then I will just copy this and I'll say horsey is moving. Okay, so that so that's how it works when it comes to header files and uh, and C plus plus files. Okay, so um, header is where you declare your functions, and C plus CPP files is where you do the implementation of the file. Okay. Mm. Any questions so, so far? Yeah. So I know this is just for example sake, but let's say we had, um, let's say instead of creating separate animal and human classes, we created a an overall, well, we you already did, but you created an overall animal HPP um, oh. class. And then instead of making human a separate one, you, you just inherited from animal. Mm -hmm. And then you create like another, um, another, like a horse that in also inherits from animal. Okay. So would you also put those in their own separate CPP files because they each have their own implementation after inheriting it? Sometimes. So, so it, um, it really, it really depends on the developer. Uh, so I would say to start off, put them, put them in, put them in different files uh, because it's easier for you to classify it in your head. But as you get more experienced, uh, what you find is that sometimes classes can be pretty small, right? And that, uh, and what some developers do is they have a bunch of different classes that are in um, that that are in one source file. So I could have this class animal, and then sometimes what you'll see is that uh, there will be another there will be another class, and uh, you know, like we'll say dog. And then we'll say public animal, and that will be in there too. Uh, so there are a lot of different ways, a lot of different styles. You see some people write these. You also see some people that just use header files. They don't actually use CPP files. So they just put everything in the header. Uh, 
which can be uh, which can make the headers extremely long. Um, but that's that's another way that some some C plus plus developers actually optimize their code is uh, by using what's called header only um, header only style. Uh, so, uh, but yes, uh, I would say when you're starting off, a good practice is actually just to uh, actually just put them all in different files. That's what I used to do a lot. Um, it, it keeps it simple. Uh, but but one of the key things that you have to the, to know is that human in order to in in order to uh, actually be able to inherit from animal, it needs to have access. It needs to have access to the animal dot HPP, or else it doesn't know what animal is, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, if I do public animal, and I try to compile this. We get build build failed because it says expected class name. It doesn't realize the animal is actually another class that we actually did. But now what we can do is we can actually do an include. So I could do include animal.hpp. So something like this. Uh, include animal uh, animal.hpp like that. And now we have build succeeded. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's see, see how that, see how that works. It's weird that it's still giving you an error, but. Um, oh, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So that's, so that's how that works. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, because it has to know, it has to know where the animal class is if you're going to try to inherit from animal. Right. Mm, right. Yeah. So, so how does this affect, um, I hear that like from a logical perspective, I would expect the compiler to compile slower because it has to look through more files, but I actually hear this speeds it up. Could you go into that? So this is something, so now you're going towards an area that I don't really know a lot about. Uh, so the header, um, this gets into where, you have to compile it into um, what happens is that there's this process when C++ uh, compiles where you break it down, where it takes the header and CPP files and it breaks them into object files. And so what it does is it, it reads the headers. So this is my understanding of it. And, um, and this is something I should probably understand a little bit better is that what happens is that it first looks at the headers and it um, is, and that it basically lists like, okay, you have all of these, you have all of these functions that you're, uh, these function names that you're looking to call at some point. And then it has, it takes the CPPs and Basically, at a later point, what it does is it tries to link them together. So there's this process that's called linking. Mm -hmm. And um, what happens is that linking takes time because what you do, what it does is it says, okay, you have this animal, you have this animal uh, uh, class that has this eat method. And then what it does is it looks for the implementation of eat. Uh, and if it's not there, then it'll actually give you an error it's, and it's called a linking error. Uh, and I'll see, maybe, maybe I'll see if we can actually get it to do this. It's actually a pretty nasty little error uh, when, <laughs> because oh, it does it still does build succeeded, which is interesting. Actually, I think if I do this, let me try this. Um, so I'm going to include, include, animal.hpp. So now let me try this. Or if I do, if I try to create an animal. Oh, interesting. It doesn't actually do it. Oh, that's, that's, that's strange. Um, let me try doing this. Animal.eat. Okay, so now we get a build failed. Oh yeah, so this is what I mean, is 
you get this what's called an undefined symbol and it says animal e so what that means is that i've declared this and then when it tries to do this linking stage where it's linking the uh what the function that you've declared to the uh, to some type of implementation for e it says hold on there's no implementation for this and um and you don't get that so what my understanding, once again, uh, my beginner's understanding of header only, um, having the implementation as header only is that it's, it like circumvents this linking, uh, this linking stage. So you don't have to do it, which increases your efficiency and compile times. Mm -hmm. That's my understanding. So, uh, so yeah, so there we go. So I'll do this now and now we have build succeeded. So going back there, making sure that if I'm trying to get access to this animal class to declare it, uh, I need to do this hashtag include animal.hpp. Huh, that's a great way to organize files, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, and then you can do, you can include um, human.hpp as well. And, um, you know, now you can declare a human object. Yeah. So that's, that's how it, uh, that's how it works. So that's, that's really what the purpose of C++ and header files are. Uh, so as you can see, just to summarize, you have HPP files, which we will say now for where, for beginners is where you where you list your function names and your uh, what they call member variables. So these are variables that are uh, that you can call anywhere within your class. And then you have your animal.cpp where you actually do your implementation of of the uh, of the methods mm -hmm. then you make sure that you include any of those header files in uh the classes that you're trying to use uh those in that seems yeah. pretty clear to me yeah yeah that's cool yeah I mean, it, gets, it, could, it could get much more complex from here but uh but this is a good this is a good way to uh to start to start going yeah, I remember you did bring this up in your in your juice tutorials and it was it was a good this is a good segue into that. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so this is this is good. You will uh you will get you'll get more familiar with this and we'll get more complex as we as we move forward. Yeah. Yeah, I mean I uh I'll have to start using that like I said. Because I, I'm I'm very much a, a strictler for organization. Yeah. And just keep things clean. So that's good. That's good. Keep that, that, that when coding with C. <laughs> that's <laughs> <laughs> cool. So that's where we're going to uh, to end this. If you found this tutorial helpful for you, uh, please give this a like and subscribe. And we will see you next time. See you later. Peace, everyone.